Welcome to Canada's podcast. Hello, this is Robert Smigel, and welcome to the BDBC edition of Canada's podcast, where we talk to the entrepreneurs who are making it happen here in British Columbia. Today's guest is Julia Cha, an international success coach and best-selling author based in Vancouver, British Columbia. She works with entrepreneurs and alpha leaders to shatter the glass ceiling by leveraging their subconscious minds to create their dream life in all aspects a thriving career, financial abundance, and supportive relationships. Okay, now we're ready to go. Julia, let's uh, roll right into this. Welcome to uh, Canada's podcast. Thanks for taking the time today to be here for all our listeners. Thank you so much for having me here, Robert. Awesome. Okay. So tell us a little bit more about yourself and give us the details on your current business. So are you born and raised in Vancouver, British Columbia? You're from here? No. No, I'm not. I am mm-hmm. like most people in Vancouver. I was born overseas. I was born in Korea, in Seoul. And then when I was five years old, I moved to Buenos Aires, Argentina. And when I was 11, I came to Vancouver with my family. Do you, ma- do you remember Buenos Aires? Absolutely do. <laughs> <laughs> Some of my best childhood memories were made there. So, yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> cool. So, tell us about your business. Sounds very interesting. Um, you're a coach, and uh, you, but you kind of deal with the subconscious mind, which I think is really interesting. So, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. The subconscious mind is the automatic part of us, the part of us that has been programmed and trained from for, formative early age to think, feel, and act in how we make decisions, in how we react to our environment. It's also tied to who we believe we are because the automation is what in the end becomes our identity. When it comes to shattering the glass ceiling, so for example, if somebody is stuck at a certain level of growth, what is happening is that their subconscious has been set, you can think of it as a thermostat, to get to that level of success, but not beyond that. The mind is designed for efficiency. What the subconscious mind does, it's your programming for survival. So if somebody is stuck at a certain point of success, it means that their thermostat has been been set to that point, automated to have that form of success to that level, but not be it. What often requires for people to go beyond that is to do the opposite of the survival programming. Okay. Now the subconscious, is this stuff that we're born with or is this by our parents determined, like have effect on us? At what age does the, the conscious kind of take over? And you kind of, when you work with a client, does, uh, what age do you kind of say, okay, after the age of certain age or, or is it all kind of part and parcel the same thing? How do you gauge that? The subconscious is trained via repetition. Part of it is that we have emotional memory that is separate from our cognitive memory. For example, you may have a hard time remembering and same as all the listeners, who you were or what you did exactly tangibly before the age of three. But the truth is that we have emotional memory. The reason why we don't remember our our experiences before the age of three is because our cognitive mind is not quite developed at that point. Okay. In terms of subconscious programming, by the time you're age seven, you, all your successes and failures in adult life has been set up for you. Seven right. is the age. Interesting. Okay. Did you need financing to start your company? And how do you currently make money in your business now? I did not need financing to start my business. I started coaching people based on all the knowledge I acquired. Of course, I took other pro- uh, programs as well to help myself. But so much of it started with my experience of overcoming my own glass ceiling. Okay. I want you to give me a key piece of knowledge or information about your industry that our listeners can learn from that they may not know about now. Can you give us a little gem of information that, you know, this is a pretty broad uh, uh, spectrum of psychology, we'll call it. But can you give us some Thing, general knowledge about your industry? Um, do a lot of people do this? Why do you do it? Is it something that is learned? Um, and how can entrepreneurs benefit from this? 
I believe people arrive at a point when they start to feel that there's an invisible pull that's stopping them from succeeding. So if anyone's have ever felt that, something along the lines of, I think I can do better, but how come my results are always the same? Or how come I can't pass this point? Just let me know if this is not what you're exactly looking for. Because subconscious is very intangible. It is yes. the emotional memory of a person. Yeah. A part of it is also what you acquire through your parental uh, influence, generational conditioning, generational trauma, all of those things get passed down. So when it comes to doing this work, if you look at anyone who's had drastic success, meaning their start and where they are right now is entirely different. Those people have all done subconscious work. Okay. So that's part of the, the, uh, the subconscious work is, is being able to elevate yourself beyond what may be blocking you. And the subconscious work will elevate that. Yes. Yeah. It's about changing your identity. If someone believes that they are mediocre, they're going to always get mediocre results because they make mediocre decisions in their life, if that makes sense. Yes. Okay. Got it. Okay. What's the long-term vision and what will your company look like in the future? Do you see the company expanding into other areas and where beyond Vancouver, BC, or even Canada? I've already had an international business from the get-go. I believe in my first 10 clients, I had clients in California, in England, in US. So I already started off as a soul planner internationally. Right now, I'm, I have a very small segment of private clients. They are in multiple six, seven figures. And then I have a mentorship for new entrepreneurs reaching their first six figures. Those are, those are two separate programs. Where I see myself going in the future is to go into corporations as well and to help, for example, salespeople achieve their goals better. Or even oh. corporate leaders, training them to become better leaders. Okay, great. Okay, let's talk a little bit about uh, doing business in Vancouver, Canada. What are the biggest benefits for you being an entrepreneur in Vancouver, BC? I want you to give us some of the good points about starting a company here, but I also want you to give us some of the tough things or challenges for our listeners so they can keep an eye for them. How about I start with a tough one? And then we yeah, can do the tough one. I know. Yeah, okay. so tough one is cost of living. Yeah. Most entrepreneurs know that if you want to get started, the best place to start is somewhere that has a lower cost of living, but at the same time, a really nice environment to live in. So right now, I would say if I were to pick any city in Canada, Calgary is the hot place to be. It's, it's very diverse. It's cosmopolitan. Also, the cost of living is quite standard in terms of what you get being there. And Vancouver is a beautiful place. I remember when I moved there when I was 11 years old in 1994, housing was normal, no longer the case anymore. So yeah. I would say entrepreneurs starting in Vancouver, you do have a bit of that challenge, but don't worry, this is something that you can overcome. The great thing about Vancouver is that it's a very active city and it's very well-rounded. So if you put yourself out there, there are tons of opportunities. If you are looking for some kind of example or some kind of mentor type or someone who is more like you, you're likely finding someone in Vancouver who's already doing it. There are a lot of entrepreneurs in Vancouver. Yeah. Okay, great. I want you to imagine you're just moving to Vancouver. If you were to start all over again, you just moved to Vancouver, BC, but this time you don't know anyone. Mm -hmm. Knowing what you know now, what would you do? And how would you go about starting all over again as an entrepreneur? Ah, that's kind of a tough question because I did come when I was 11 years old. So I am sort of considered a new immigrant, but not at the same time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot of my identity, like I mentioned, the age seven thing, your identity is set by the age seven. So people who move before that, they will have a harder time fully feeling like they, they identify with that place. So I'm sort of like in the middle of somebody who would have come here when they're an adult. It's sort of hard for me to answer that question. If I were to arrive here now, like some of my clients, they're mm -hmm. pretty new immigrants. I would say it's a very open city and you're going to experience things that you've never experienced in other places. I've lived in other cities before, and this is the most inclusive city I've ever been to. The most okay. inclusive meaning where people are accepting of other cultures, not a melting pot, where people are very open to new ideas. 
So whatever you end up doing here, there's nothing surprising to people or shocking or different. Right. Okay. Let's talk about your routine. What does the first hour look like for you when you get up in the morning? Do you have a specific routine or a ritual that helps you get motivated to start the day? Yes, absolutely. It's really important to prime and set our minds to success. Our first four hours of the day is the most productive part of our brain. Our brain is the most productive during the first four hours. Therefore, you want to set it up so that you're not reactive all day. What I do is I get up 5 or 5.30. I naturally wake up. I don't need an alarm. It wasn't always like this. I used to be a party girl. I used to stay up until 3. <laughs> it was a normal thing. It, as, as I start to have this very specific goal in entrepreneurship, I start to change to adapt to what worked the best for productivity-wise. I highly recommend everyone, even people who believe they're night owls, to start sleeping, in, er, sleeping early and waking up early. Because if you do that, you'll feel the day is longer and you, have, you, get, you just get a lot more done. So I will get up at 5, 5.30. I don't like to eat anything, but I will drink water. The, the reason is if you put food in your body, your, the energy has to go to your stomach. So then you have less brain power. When we start to pay attention to productivity, to, to every little detail, we start to see how much all of this stuff affects us. And what I do is I will do my meditation and it doesn't have to be crazy. I don't believe in spending your whole morning doing, doing your morning routine. I do a 10 to 15 minute meditation to set myself up for energy. I might do a short yoga, 10 minutes, not every day, but I would have a coffee and I like it black or I put cocoa powder in it and that's it. Um, sometimes almond milk. I just like to keep everything simple. Then I would do the first thing that I need to do that day. It's really important to focus on the one thing that's going to move the needle that day, whether that's lead generation, certain aspects of content, whatever it is that's the most pressing, important, that's going to bring new revenue. After okay. that, after that, I check in with my staff because by that time, everyone else wakes up. So my, my kids wake up, so I get them ready for school. And then by the time I finish that little part of the day, I'm ready to communicate with my staff. You talk to lots of entrepreneurs and you consult with them. Do you think entrepreneurs have to be weird or unique in a positive way or are wired differently? I believe it's both. Some people have always felt different. They have felt different growing up because our home family of origin is usually structured like a corporation. So people who do well in that environment and their family of origin, they will probably figure out a pretty good way of navigating institutions. So school system and then later corporations. It is a very similar vibe, but entrepreneurs have a different way of seeing things. I believe part of it is that part of it is training and also uh, wanting to do things more efficiently, creatively, or seeing a different perspective. And that part of it is also, of course, trained, but so much of it, they are wired differently. Okay, good. Let's talk about how you educate yourself. What books are you reading now or even audiobooks or podcasts? And can you recommend any books for our listeners who are also entrepreneurs? I prefer to read books. I know a lot of people listen. I do do podcasts once in a while, but I'm a very visual person. Part of what we need to know about ourselves is to become really extremely self-aware of how you learn the best, not only what you're thinking and feeling every day and tuning into that and setting yourself up for success by honoring those things, but it's also about knowing how you learn the best. I'm a very visual person. So sometimes I would have audible version, but I also have the Kindle or the paper copy of the book, of the same book, if I like something. For example, the books I would highly recommend is The Science of Getting Rich. Um, and also um, uh, any book by Dr. David Hawkins. So that's Power Versus Force, Letting Go. Those two are my top books. Okay. Now, you're obviously a very, very busy person, but Vancouver does offer many, many things and is a lifestyle city. And we all know that. How do you balance work and how do you relax and not think about work? And how do you uh, accomplish your favorite activities in BC? Do you ski? Do you bike? Do you kayak, golf, hike, or simply go for a drive? 
you see, remember you asked me if I remember Argentina? Mm -hmm. Our formative years are so important because we don't even realize how much it affects us. So I actually don't like snow, <laughs> even though I live here. Mm -hmm. I'm 100% beach person. And I like that really powdery, sandy beach. That's what I like. Most of our beaches are rocky, but I still make do. So I like going to the beach. And Kids the other beach thing, is pretty nice. Kids yeah, yeah, it's nice. It's still yeah. rocky, but you know, some parts of it are sandy. Yeah. So I like going to the beach. That's one thing I love doing. If I have, if I have nothing else to do on the weekend, actually, that's not true. I will make time for the beach. Yeah. I will go to Stanley Park. I would go to Ambleside. That's the closest beach that I, from where I am. So I will go there. It's frequent. Evening, sometimes just, just for an evening stroll, just to dip my feet in, even though it's freezing sometimes in yeah. the evening. So beach okay. is 100% 100, 100 beach. I cannot live outside, away from ocean. This is one of those priorities. I must have it. And the other thing I really enjoy doing with my family is bicycling around Stanley Park. That's something that really resets. It makes me feel really abundant, puts me in the right state. The other thing I really love doing is hiking, even though many of the trails are closed right now. The one yeah. we like going to is Quarry Rock, but that one is closed still, as far as I know, last time we checked for COVID. Okay. But we'd love to get back to that. If you weren't doing what you do now, what would you like to do for a profession? If I wasn't doing what I'm doing if now. If you weren't doing, yeah. On subconscious mind consultant, I would I would likely be a a clinical psychologist, <laughs> which is which is the same. Same thing, pretty close. If I wasn't a coach, I I would be there. But actually, okay. the other thing I really love is fashion and beauty. I've noticed okay. that a lot of people change when they are able to see themselves differently. So, it, it, in many ways, it's sort of the same thing, but from a different perspective. Right. Transformation. What kind of a job would you not like to do? Could not do that job. Accounting. <laughs> That's a favorite amongst the entrepreneurs. That's for sure. Yeah, accounting. I have so much respect for my bookkeeper, accountant, anyone in that team. I have a lot of respect for them. You yeah, have to be born too. to do it. Absolutely. In business, what is your favorite word, quote, or sentence that you like to use? You use this frequently. The Only Way Out is Through by Robert Frost. The Only Way Out is Through? Yes. Okay. As humans, we like to avoid things. Yes. But in business, especially if we avoid things, we're asking for trouble. <laughs> yes. What's your least favorite word or sentence you do not like to hear in business? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I have a least favorite. Yeah. Hmm. That's a tough can't, question. Can't. No. I Can't will try. That? I think that's the worst thing. I will try. Yeah. Okay. Let me try that. We need to eliminate those words. Yeah. <laughs> if you had to pick one or two words to describe yourself, what would it be and why? One or two words. Describe yourself. I believe I'm very transformative. Every two years, I reinvent myself. So I'm a changer. And a catalyst. A for, catalyst? Yes. Okay. Anything keeping you up at night these days? This is why. Yes, I I'm raising a teenager. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I'm there too. Yeah, I got in, two this, of them. in this world where when I was a teenager, there was no social media, there was no YouTube, there was nobody twerking and popping their booty. It's a different world. We're raising yeah. Our children. <laughs> yeah, we just had bicycles and friends and Yes. Mm. So simple, right? Yeah. Well. <laughs> okay, give us the top three things on your inspired list, inspired life list. This could be a TEDx talk, philanthropy, write a book, travel more. Anything like that? Well, I have written a book. This is my book right here. Am I am I writing a second book. Yes. Is am I there yet? I just flashed. Okay. I'm writing a second book right now. To do this, TEDx is definitely one of them. I've, I've been investigating and I can't wait until things get back to that state where we can do that. I am already looking into it. My PR person is helping me out, reaching out. She reached out to you, for example, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the other one is seeing my family. I and do want to travel. I do want to travel. Yeah. My list is my, 
I have friends in New York. I would like to go and see. I haven't done that in a while. I, I would love to go to Hawaii. I have people that I know there. And I, like I said, I love the beach. So the beach central there. But the more I think about it, priority is my family. They're in Korea. My okay. elderly aunt, mostly my aunts, my yeah. cousins, my uncles. They're getting older. Yeah. Their grandparents' age, not much time there. Right. They helped to right. raise me. So that's a ba- big part of why okay. I'm drawn to that time wise. So um, even the other day, I was talking to my aunt and she asked me when I was coming. I said, as soon as flights are back uh, and we don't need to quarantine anymore, you know, I'll get the vaccine and everything. And so we can see each other. Good. It's a nice plan. Yeah. Okay, good. Do you have any advice that you may have received that you can pass on to entrepreneurs throughout Canada? Hmm. Yes. Yes, I do. Do you need to know who said it? Sure. You'd like to share that? Yeah, sure. So actually, if entrepreneurs have looked around and you're if you are audience, if you are if you are very involved in online entrepreneurs, you may know some ovens. And I took some ovens this course, I want to say almost five years ago now. And one of the things he repeated all the time, it wasn't just to me, it was to everyone, stop thinking so binary. And when I first started, I didn't realize how many judgments and limiting beliefs I held. And that's what he meant. The binary thinking, uh, things are either black or white. That's the most unhelpful way of being that will stop you from succeeding. Because if it's uh, a no in a sales or can't do this, or it, it's a ceiling of some sort, or perspective on something or self-limiting beliefs, right? I mean, these are yes. very binary things, right? Binary Logic. thoughts come all the time. Assumptions. Oh, so-and-so doesn't have money. Oh, they said, no, they might not. They must not like me. Those things are not true. What if those things were not true? The things that you believe, I don't mean you, but you as in general. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The things that you believe that are absolute truth, you need to be prepared to question those things. How about yeah. the opposite were to be true? And then we that, immediately feel the resistance coming up. Now, is that that's, part of the, the, that's part of the subconscious mind coming in as well, yeah, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So the subconscious mind doesn't think binary or is, does it think binary? Well, the subconscious mind is how we've been trained to think. So yeah. the binary thinking is an old programming in the subconscious that doesn't help us. Yes. I've also yeah. heard a lot... Uh, our, I've heard a lot of Tony Robbins saying our brain is a two million years old and we're we're built to say, protect ourselves from saber toothed tigers and right. it's a different. That's what we're always in a uh, defensive, reactive mode. Yeah, and that's tough to change, isn't it? I mean, it really is. I mean, yes, that's that's the survival brain, the subconscious. That's what he's talking about. The subconscious is there to protect you. But now if you want to thrive, you have to go beyond survival. Right. And so that's where you essentially help people make that step. Yeah, because we don't know that they're judgment until someone points it out. We believe it's reality. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, we're going to wrap this up. How can our listeners get hold of you? And is there anything you'd like to add before you leave us today? They can find me at juliacha.com. They can also download my book. All of the link is there. They can find it. Also, my YouTube channel. You just search for Julia Cha. Unless you can put a link down below. Yeah, that will put um, some links there. Yeah. yeah. Um, and what I would like to say is that the last person standing wins, no matter what you're going through right now. So don't give up. So this could be in the industry you're in, or this could be yeah. in life in general. Right. It applies to pretty much anything. Awesome. We have to treat it like medical school, right? They filter yes. people out by making it super hard. Entrepreneurship is exactly the same. Oh, it's like trying to become a Navy SEAL. Exactly. You got you to go through the test and the last one standing wins. Yeah, you don't have to do it perfectly. Be the last one standing. It really is an endurance game in a lot of ways. And and one of the things, I, Cheryl Cran was on the show one time. She says being an entrepreneur is a lot being like an athlete. You have to yeah. be in physically good shape, mentally in good shape. Yes. It's, it's much more than just being, you know, there operating. And uh, I think that's a big part of it is, is the end game. So yes, absolutely. That's a good one for me. 
Okay, Julia, thanks for coming on the show. I've learned a lot about you, and I'm sure our listeners have as well. And to all our listeners, thanks for listening to Cannabis Podcast. Like, comment, and subscribe to all our channels to get the latest podcasts from entrepreneurs across Canada. And we will see you next time. Thanks so much, Julia. Thank you, Robert.